to this service on this fourth Sunday after Trinity and welcome to those watching at home. Service sheets are all on the website or via the email I've sent you. If you've clicked on the email link for the video or chosen a playlist version on YouTube, you'll be able to join in with two hymns, New Every Morning is the Love and The Church is One Foundation. Look on the newsletter for extra details and for help with the intercessions. And so, let's have our service. Would you please stand? We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Knowing that we are uniquely loved by our Almighty Father, we confess our sins in penitence and faith, saying together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, on your reading sheet, the collect. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now please sit down for our readings. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. 
Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For well, you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be, may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. And so we stand for the gospel. Now hear the holy gospel according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came out and came. And when he saw him, fell at his feet. And he begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She'd heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of a disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched my clothes? He looked all round to see who had done it. 
But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear. Only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside. And he took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talithakum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down. Do you get distracted? Set out to do one thing and then do another? I do. It's the, now what did I come in here for? Syndrome. One way round this, of course, is to make lists. Prioritising the most important thing first. Perhaps the most important person to see first. Now, Jesus' life must have been full of distractions. And you would have thought what he would have prioritised would have been the most important of purposes and the most important of people. So he would get over his distractions. But Jesus is up for distractions, counting everyone worthy, and every purpose as worthy too. This is shown in today's Gospel. Everyone was and is important to Jesus. Surrounded by a great crowd, Jesus was being pulled this way and that. Everyone was vying for his focus. Jairus, an important man and leader of the local synagogue, and desperate, does get Jesus' attention. Jairus' daughter is dying. Come, Jesus, lay your hands on her and heal her. And so he went with him. But it's interesting what happens next. Mark, the Gospel writer, doesn't complete Jairus' story, but reports Jesus' distraction by a woman who suffered for 12 years with hemorrhages. She, too, is desperate, but unnamed, unknown, and unimportant. But not to Jesus. The woman then has Jesus' total attention. And Mark takes twice as long to dwell on her plight and story than Jairus's. She spent all her money on doctors and cures and got nowhere. She's ill and she's hurting. She's an outcast because of her blood flow and very timid of approaching this great man. But through the crowd, she reaches in and touches his cloak. And he knows. How can you know with everyone crowding around you, ask the disciples? The woman, just like Jairus, fell down before Jesus and poured it all out. Jesus' response in loving word and deed is to heal her, saying, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, be healed. So, 
we come to Jairus, part two. At the same time comes the message that Jairus' daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any further? But Jesus cautions Jairus, do not fear, only believe. He goes to his house, makes his way through the weepers and wailers and says, why all this fuss? This child is asleep. To which they nearly laugh. Jesus shuts them all out and just takes Jairus and his wife, mum and dad, to their daughter, together with Peter, James and John. And taking her hand, says, little girl, get up. And she immediately does so. And Jesus tells mum and dad, give us something to eat. Jesus cares about everyone, has no favourites. Important to the world or not, everyone is important to Jesus. And this is as true today as it was then. Your problems are as important to Jesus as the next person's. So bring them to him. Yes, remember, the so-called grace of good. Do remember them in your prayers. But remember everyone you care about. Everyone you hear about, perhaps in the news, in your prayers too. Count all as equal in the sight of God. Because that's what he does. Amen. Remind us of our great God, ourselves of our great God, as we declare our faith in Him. Let's say the creed together. Please stand. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power and our heart. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, let us pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for an almighty and all-powerful God who loves us more than we can ever know. Lord, let's hold on to that promise that when you seem far away, that you really care for us. In the words of Paul, no powers on this earth can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. May that be true in each of our lives. Heavenly Father, you're a person who answers all our prayers. May we believe wholly in that. Sometimes we feel our prayers are not answered. But Lord, you answer them as you need for us. So Lord, just let us hold powerfully onto that. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, as we move towards the end of this pandemic, as powers are released, Lord, we just pray that you will give the Prime Minister and the members of his cabinet, members of the government, guide and direct them in all they do they may ease restrictions carefully weighing the freedom of people yet keeping us safe we think of our own church lord as we try to get back to normal trying to worship as we have in the past lord direct and guide us as we decide the things that we need to do to get back to normal and lord as we work through lord we'll be, be, be a powerful witness to those in and around our community Lord, may be a real beacon for Christ in this area. Lord, but what we say, by who we are, by what we do, may others see Christ in us. Lord, we pray for our local hospitals. We thank you for the vaccination programme. 
for the many millions of people who have been vaccinated and as we push this pandemic further and further away. Lord, give strength to all our doctors and nurses as they deal with the effects of the pandemic and all other illnesses that they are treating at this time. Lord, we remember that we have the great freedom to worship you in complete freedom. But there are many areas of this world, many people live under people of other faiths, in totalitarian regimes, in dictatorships, who have no freedom to worship you. So, Lord, we just lift each and every one of those into your hands. Lord, they suffer through loss of homes, through loss of families, even death and persecution. Lord, their faith continues to remain strong. Lord, be, Lord, may we know something of that faith in our lives at this time. Lord, we pray especially for the wider world, for the many problems in this wider world. We think especially of the Miami and the flats that collapsed in Miami. We think of the, in Canada, those affected by the child grave scandal. We think of Belarus and other areas of this world where people abuse power. Lord, just give guidance and wisdom to all in authority. They be with others first and themselves last. Heavenly Father, you had great compassion on all those who were sick or in need, and at times brought to your knees in tears for those who were in desperate need. So remember those who are ill at this time. Heavenly Father, we lift each and every one into your hands. May you just surround them with your love and your peace at this time. We just lift them into a Heavenly Father's presence. We may his healing hands upon them. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have died recently and in the past. We thank you for their lives and what they have meant to each and every one of us. Just lifting up into our Heavenly Father's presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand for the peace. The creator who brought order out of chaos, give peace to you. The saviour who stilled the raging storm, give peace to you. The spirit who inspires faith, give peace to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also